first thing I want to say is that disabled people are not a separate group of people. You know, we're not a race apart. Impairment and disability are experiences which happen to ordinary people, to all of you. They can happen to anyone and they probably will. And that's what makes the whole depression strange because in order to get the agreement of ordinary people to mistreat each other, once we acquire impairments, once you change from being a so-called normal person to one of us, um, <clears throat> and suddenly the way you are treated changes, um, in order to get our agreement to do that, we have to create this myth of otherness. Um, and that myth has to be reinforced on a daily basis. And the main ways it's done is through segregation, through misinformation, and through silencing people who are oppressed, the people who are oppressed by that oppression. And I'm, I just wanted to flag up this wonderful book uh, written by Ellen Clifford. If you haven't read it, you really ought to go and get it. It's fantastic. It's called The War Against Disabled People. And she documents forensically um, the unholy alliance between New Labour, between the coalition government and the Conservatives since 2007 onwards, who made some sort of decision that the inclusion of disabled people as valued citizens in mainstream communities had gone too far. And they've completely worked together to put progressive and liberating policies for disabled people into reverse gear. And it was, it's been a deliberate, um, a deliberate ideological thing. Um, and it's been part of the wider agenda to roll back the state um, and to further exploit working people for, you know, and keep, keep the, uh, the profits for themselves. However, when you roll back the state, the majority of people who depend on assistance from the state are poor, are baby people and disabled people. So obviously we're going to be affected disproportionately. To just sum it up, since 2007, various governments have all been part of it have introduced the bedroom tax, the work capability assessment with its punitive sanctions, a benefits cap, the withdrawal of the council tax benefit, scrap the independent living fund, replace disability allowance with PIP, reverse the progress to include disabled children in mainstream education, scrap the disabled students allowance, and starved out of existence most disabled people's organisations which could help people fight back. Unsurprisingly, the only campaign to repeatedly hit the headlines is disabled people's right to assisted suicide. Isn't that wonderful? With, the, with austerity as the excuse, the aim was, and it still is, to save millions of pounds, which can be redirected back to the already rich. But in practice, in reality, it's cost, cost millions and achieved nothing but the destruction of a functioning welfare state. The suffering to disabled people and their families has been immense. The UN report concluded that the sum total of all these policies has created a human disaster. And that was before the COVID outbreak, in which two thirds of the deaths have been disabled people.
I'll repeat that, two thirds of the deaths of nearly 46,000 people have been disabled people. Where's the outrage? Where's the publicity? Where are the demonstrations? Where are the public promises to do better? Where's the apologies you were asking for? In my experience of lefty politics, there is little understanding of the issues and little desire to look at them or focus on them. And at a local level, I was astounded by the lack of awareness of even basic issues such as wheelchair access to meetings. And I have to say, when I first joined my branch, they still had meetings upstairs. And I would think it's the only thing I've achieved when I got on the EC that they had to bring all their meetings downstairs. That all that have and still have very little awareness about deaf and hard of hearing people. I asked them to buy a loop, a hearing loop for their meetings and they wouldn't do it. I questioned what, what we should have a BSL interpreter at least for our annual big meetings. They never did it. They never made any of their websites or paper things accessible. There was never large print. Um, they never acknowledged that some of us couldn't go door knocking and that it'd be much better if we had um, street stalls, which some of us can do in our wheelchairs. Um, I never got anywhere with any of that. But in general, our right to democracy, to engage in democracy, is almost non-existent. And there's very, very few disabled people that will go back again and again and again to meetings where you're treated like that, to be honest. And I don't think you'll ever get me back. <laughs> the the current, current government policies are not just treating disabled people badly, they're creating disabled people, more and more and more of them, by their policies, through stress, insecurity, poverty, homelessness, um, and the reduction of services that will prevent disabilities increasing. And uh, I just want to say that I think we're an enormous resource. We're a huge wasted resource to the community because we've had to, we're problem solvers almost by default. And um, I've had to think about things very deeply, inclusion in particular. Um, so please read Ellen's book, start with educating yourselves. Um, and don't, don't get stuck on guilt, but let's get stuck on the future and how we can make it better. Yeah.